if we first could just talk about this kind of price action conversation we were just having with Valdana, mm. how sustainable do you think the rally we have seen in 2023 actually is? We think we've, we've hit the bottom. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of churn as it goes, uh, as the year progresses. You know, people are looking at the macro environment. Obviously, Vildana mentioned a number of things, uh, the Fed probably being being paramount. But um, I think you also, you know, suggested that have things sold off so much that, that really that's just a big part of it. And I think, yes, you know, those of us who have been involved in, in crypto uh, for a long time, are, are kind of getting used to this. And, um, you know, there's been some research put out that every downdraft is, is sort of slightly less than the previous one. Um, so if that's the case this time, then we've bottomed out. But I don't think it's a straight line up from here. Um, I do think the optimism translates into perhaps climbing the wall of worry, uh, which is a good thing. We can handle that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a slower move up is better. Hey, Greg, I mean, clearly you're also looking to make moves of your own in the industry. You're one of the players here that want to take over the sponsorship of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. I'm curious as to, A, why you want to do this, and B, this proposal of re reducing the fees associated with that trust, the conversations you might be having on the sides with other investors. Look, at a high level, 2022 was not good. For crypto, right? Everyone focuses on the price action, but really, I think we lost a lot of trust in the from the investing public. Uh, you know, people blew up. Uh, there may have been illegal activities. You know, we, we've all been watching this um, drama unfold, and so towards the end of the year, we just felt we needed to to do something. And there's a lot of investor angst in our particular sector around secondary market prices and and things like that. So we're taking steps that we think will help to at least address what we can, um, which is taking care of our Bitcoin investors, trying to do uh, the right thing, price things responsibly and, and, and manage the funds as best we can in a volatile uh, market. You know, we take uh, a different view from other players in the market as to what's possible or what requires SEC uh, exemptions and things like that. And so, um, you know, our goal is to just uh, let our actions speak louder than our words and, and really execute in what we think is the best interest of investors. Speaking of trading, on one hand, you have that NAV really kind of coming in. People have been buying, buying into the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, given how much it had sold off. But one of the big sellers, according to the Financial Times, was DCG, apparently selling mm -hmm. shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. What do you make of that as a market participant? <laughs> As a market participant, I mean, look, I think that's very uh, tricky territory. We don't hold, uh, you know, our Osprey doesn't hold positions in its own its own fund or, or have a parent company type of situation where there's a lot of, um, you know, cross currents. So I, I can't really speak to the specifics of that. I don't I don't even know if that's necessarily true or not. Um, you know, I follow along, but I don't, you know, have, uh, you know, direct knowledge of, of the situation. I think just generally what investors are looking for is, hey, you know, a lot of Bad stuff has gone on this year. We're trying to sift through, you know, who are the who are the people that, and the institutions that we can trust. You know, what's real and what's not real in crypto. And I think that those of us who come from a tradfi background really understand investor mindsets. Um, whereas there's a lot of kind of a techie mindset in crypto of moving fast and breaking things. And unfortunately, I think a lot of that got washed out in 2022. I mean, it's unfortunate in one sense, but it's also a good thing. It needed to happen. And so we're still seeing some of that. Uh, you know, topple into 2023. But I'm optimistic. I think this is a cleansing that's that was needed. I think that uh, the industry will emerge um, stronger and will, you know, will forge a path forward. Hopefully Congress, you know, makes some kind of movement and, uh, you know, gets their act together to to help provide some clarity because we do think that's a major issue. Well, I'm glad you kind of brought up those regulatory issues, Greg, because that's another headwind that this industry has to contend with. And on the subject of regulation, mm -hmm. there is the issue of a spot ETF and obviously GPTC, the attempt to convert into an ETF, a fight, by the way, that they are still fighting. I know you filed a lawsuit last month essentially alleging that Grayscale had misrepresented the likelihood of that ETF conversion actually happening. Can you just walk me through your argument there when you also are still trying to work with regulators and make that ETF happen? Isn't this a regulatory problem? Yeah, there's actually a lot of, of moving parts here. Um, uh, we do have a lawsuit uh, that, that, that's out there. I, I have to point people to the materials themselves. I can't really comment on the particulars there. But um, I think taking a step back, um, you know, 
various investors have, or various uh, actors in the market have, I think, damaged the industry in various ways, right? We're trying to do our best to rectify that in whatever way we can. Some actions out there impacted the, the ecosystem overall. Some impacted us directly and our, and our clients directly. So we want to rectify that. And um, we're taking steps both with our own fund and um, you know, in, in the industry to try and make sure that justice is served. Okay, but if you could put a likelihood or a probability around that spot ETF actually one day coming to fruition, being realized, what, yeah. what, what would that probability look like? I mean, I wish I had a number for you because I like numbers, but, um, you know, based on our discussions with the SEC, um, you know, I, I personally don't understand the, the holdups at this point. I think they could easily see their way clear to rationally and logically approving the ETF, but I'm not sure that that's going to happen. And I'm not sure I understand um, all of the um, interests that, that go into making that decision to stay put, right? It may not be as simple as just the Bitcoin ETF uh, itself. I mean, I think there's broader considerations that involve, you know, the, the whole of crypto. I mean, we, you know, we're focused on this narrow piece and it'd be great to solve this problem. Um, but, you know, Congress and the SEC, I mean, they're thinking about much broader issues, whether it's stable coins or whether it's, uh, you know, online lending programs. I mean, they have a lot of considerations. And so um, I don't I don't know what they are thinking with respect to how, you know, approving this thing over here might affect that thing over there. And so I think it's all uh, tied together, unfortunately, because I do think the spot Bitcoin ETF would solve a lot of the issues that investors are facing. And it would have uh, avoided a lot of the problems that came up when there was only mainly one instrument to trade and mm -hmm. lots of arbitrage and lending and all kinds of things. So, uh, you know, it'd be great to fix this. I'm just not convinced uh, it's happening anytime soon.